understand how to find our squares for numbers beyond 80. We have already learned that for 30 to 80, always the base should be taken as 50. So how to get a square of a number which is more than 80? For example, let's say we have to find out 84 square. Let us understand what happens if we take 84 as 50 plus 34. We know that when we take a number as 50 plus x, the first term will be 2500, second term will be x into 100 and the third term is x squared. So here when we take 50 plus 34, the first term is 2500, second term will be 3400 because it is plus 34, we will get 3400. And the third term here is 34 square and that is what is the problem for us. We have no idea what 34 square is. Why? Well, because we know squares only up to 30. Now again if we try to take 34 as 50 minus 16, the procedure becomes really lengthy. So the point here is once we cross 80, the expansion will be 50 plus more than 30. And once a number is more than 30, the square is not known to us. So let us see how to find out for squares when the number crosses 80. Now the point to be understood here is like from 30 to 80, we have taken the base as 50. So from 80 to 130. For squares from 80 to 130, you can take the base as 100. So let's see what happens when we take the base as 100. That means when we fix the first term as 100. So for any number from 80 to 130, it should be taken as 100 plus x or 100 minus x. For example, 84 squared. 84 squared can be taken as 100 minus 16 whole square. Generally, we feel that 84 should be taken as 80 plus 4, but that is really very difficult when compared to this method. So always take it as 100 minus 16. Now, if we try to expand this, we get the first term as a square. That is nothing but 100 square minus 2 into 16 into 100, 2ab plus b square. That is 16 square. Now, if you look at this, the first term is 100 square. 100 square is nothing but 10,000 minus Second term here, 2 into 16, 32 into 100, 3200. Plus the last term here is 16 square, which is 256. So 10,000 minus 3200 is 6800. 6800 plus 256 is 7056. That means 84 squared will be equal to 7056. So let us now understand how can we get the answer orally without writing all these steps here. The point is, if we take the number as 100 plus x or 100 minus x, no doubt the first term will be 100 squared, that is 10,000. So like in case of 50, we have 2,500 as the first term. Here always we have 10,000 as the first term. The second term here will be 2 into a into b. That means 2 into 100 into 16 or 2 into 16 into 100. Now the point is, if this is 50, that means when the base is 50, 2 into 50 gives us 100. So that is the reason b into 100 is directly taken in the answer. But here we already have got one of the terms as 100. And if you look at the remaining part, it is 2 into 16, 32. So that is the reason 32 into 100, 3200 is taken here. So the point here is whenever we take the base as 100, the other term should be doubled and then multiplied with 100. Like if it is 50 minus 16, we directly take it as minus 1600. But because it is 100 minus 16, we should take it as minus 3200 that means double of 1600 and the last term will be 16 square that is 256. So very clearly when the base is 100 the first term is 10,000 second term will be 2 into b into 100 that means double the other number and multiply with 100 and the third term will be b square. Let us take a few more examples to understand this. Let's say we have to find out 92 square. Now you know that 92 should be taken as 100 minus 8. So directly I can say that the first term is 10,000 which is always fixed. Because it is minus 8, we should take minus 1600. Remember it should be double. Minus 8 into 2 is minus 16. So minus 1600 plus 8 square plus 8 square. So 10,000 minus 1600 is 8,400. 8,400 plus 8 square is 64. So this will be equal to 8,464. So this is what is 92 square. Likewise, if I want what is 97 square, 97 is 100 minus 3. You need not even write these steps on paper. Directly visualize the number of steps there. 97 is 100 minus 3. So 10,000 minus 600. 10,000 minus 600 is 9,400. 9,400 plus 3 square is 9,409. So the answer here will be 9409. Let's see what happens if we cross 100. For example, we have to find out what is 106 square, 106 square. Now here, 106 is nothing but 100 plus 6. So as per the expansion, first term is 10,000. 
Second term, because it is plus 6, we have to take double, plus 1200. So 10,000 plus 1200, that is 11,200 plus 6 square is 36. So the answer here will be 11,236. Likewise, I want what is 124 squared. Now this is really a large number, 124 squared. But if you are comfortable with this technique, finding out 124 squared will not take more than 3 to 4 seconds. 124 is 100 plus 24. So the first term is 10,000. Second term is double of B. That means 24 doubles becomes 48. So 10,000 plus 4,800. 10,000 plus 4,800 is 14,800. And the last term is 24 square. 24 square we know is 576. So 14,800 plus 576. That will be equal to 15,376. So this is how simple is finding out squares. So for numbers ranging from 80 to 130, always take the base as 100. Before we take some more examples from squares, let us quickly revise whatever we have learned so far. As I've already mentioned, for squares from 1 to 30, you have to remember them by heart. So make sure that you are perfect with the 1 to 30 squares. So that finding out squares more than 30 will become easy for us. Now, for any number ranging from 30 to 80, if you have to find out the square, we should always consider the base as 50. So that number becomes 50 plus x or 50 minus x whole square. So the first term will be 2500 plus or minus x into 100. So whatever x we have, that should be taken 100 times plus x square. And as I've already mentioned, writing even these steps is not required if you are comfortable with mental calculations. And for anything from 80 to 130, the base should be considered as 100. So that becomes 100 plus or minus x whole square. So the first term will be 10,000. Second term will be plus or minus 2x into 100 plus x square. And likewise, if we have to find out squares of numbers more than 130, what we can do there is consider the base as 150. So likewise, you just try to write 150 plus or minus x whole square and understand what will be the three terms. For example, 144 square. 144 square is beyond 130. So that should be taken as 150 minus 6 whole square. So again, the first term will be 150 square that is 22,500 plus or minus. Here we will get 3x into 100 and plus x square. So the point here is, depending on the base, here the first and the second terms will be changing. For 50, we have 2500. For 100, we have 10,000. So for 150, we'll have 22,500. For 50, it is x into 100. For 100, 2x into 100. So for 150, it will be 3x into 100. And last term always is x squared. So likewise, if you practice, finding out squares of any number beyond 130 can also become very easy. So either try to consider the base as 150, or then you can take it as 200, 250, and so on. Now the next point here is how to find out squares of numbers ending with 5. Now this is a special case where finding out squares of numbers ending with 5 is a very simple job. For example, we know that 5 squared is 25, 15 squared is 225, 25 squared is 625, 35 square will be equal to what? Now if you try to understand the pattern here, whenever a number ends with 5, its square always ends with 25. So if this number is ending with 5, we are sure that the answer should end with 25. So 35 square has to end with 25. The only concern is what is the remaining part of the answer. For example, here it's like 0, here we have 2, here we have 6. So how to get the remaining part of the answer in case of 35 square? So that can be understood as follows. If you look at this, the number here is 0, 5 whole square. So this tens place into the next higher integer, 0 into 1 is 0. If you go for 15, that's like 1 into the next integer, 1 into 2 is 2. So 2 into the next integer, 3, 2 into 3 is 6. So that is the reason we get 6, 2, 5. So here it should be 3 into 4, 3 into 4 is 12. So the answer here is 12, 25. Likewise, if I want 45 square, 45 square is what? 4 into the next integer, 4 into 5, 20, 25. Or let's say we want 75 square. 75 square is 7 into 8, 56. So 5, 6, 2, 5. Or for that matter, we have to find out 125 square. 12 into 13. 12 into 13 is 156. So this becomes 156, 2, 5. Or let's say 195 square. 19 into 20 is 380. So 380. And because the number is ending in 5, square ends with 25. So this is how we can find out squares of numbers ending with 5. If you observe properly, this is nothing but a case of multiplication of complementary numbers. For example, 35 square, we know that 35 square is nothing but 35 into 35. 
Now, if you try to observe here, sum of the units places is 10. 5 plus 5 is 10. And the remaining part of the number is same. Here, 10's place is 3. Here, also it is 3. So, these numbers are complementary. So, we can find out the answer as 5 into 5, 25. That is, the first step is multiplication of units places. And second step is 10's place into the next digit, 3 into 4, 12. So that is how we are able to find out squares of numbers ending with 5. Likewise, in case of, let's say, 65 square. 65 square is 65 into 65. Now, if you observe again, these are complementary numbers. 5 plus 5 is 10 and 10's places are equal. So these numbers are called complementary numbers. And the answer can be obtained as 5 into 5, 25 and 6 into the next digit, 42. So 65 square will be 4225. It is your turn now. On the screen here, you can find six questions which are nothing but squares of different numbers. And I believe 30 seconds should be more than enough to answer these six questions. And your time starts now. Time up friends, I hope you all have got all the answers right. Let's see what the answers are. 57, 50 plus 7, so 2500 plus 700, 3200 plus 7 square, 49, so 3249. 71, 71 is 50 plus 21, so 2500 plus 2100, 4600, 4600 plus 21 square is 441, 4600 plus 441 will be 5041. So this is 5041. 44 squared, 50 minus 6 whole squared. So 2500 minus 600, that is 1900. 1900 plus 6 square. 1900 plus 6 square is 1900 plus 36. So 1936. The next one here is 108 whole square. So that should be taken as 100 plus 8 whole square. So the first term is 10,000. Second term as we know is nothing but x into 2 into 100 or 2x into 100, so 8 into 2, 16 into 100, 1600. So 10,000 plus 1600 is 11,600. 11,600 plus 8 squared, that is 64. So the answer here is 11,664. The next one is 135 whole square. Now we know how to find out squares of numbers ending with 5. The answer will be ending with 25. And the remaining part of the answer here is 13 into the next higher integer, that is 13 into 14. 13 into 14 is 182. So this becomes 18225. And the last one, 196 square. Now 196 square is really a large number. But then if you can take the base as 200, finding out square becomes easy. So 196 should be taken as 200 minus 4 whole square. 200 minus 4 whole square. So 200 square, that will be the first term. 200 square is 40,000. Now remember, because we are taking the base as 200, x should be multiplied with 4. When the base is 50, we say we take x into 100. When the base is 100, we take 2x into 100. Base is 150, 3x into 100. So when the base is 200, it should be taken as 4x into 100. So minus 4 should be taken 4 times. Minus 4 into 4, minus 16. Minus 1600. So the first term is 40,000. Second term is minus 1600. This gives us 38,400. 38,400 plus 4 square, that is 16. So the answer here will be 38,416. So friends, as you can see here, if you really understand the concept of how to take base and find out the required terms, then finding out squares of even larger numbers is a very simple job. We need not write anything on paper except the answer. So practice well on this and make sure that you are very good in finding out squares.